Hello everyone. I hope that everybody enjoyed your um, spring break weekend, long weekend that we got. Um, I got this stuffed Peeps bunny from my mother-in-law that will be a prize for one of you at some point for doing something um, because as beautiful as this is, I might not need to keep it myself. So what are we gonna be talking about today is the next topic in our unit on graph algorithms. And just as a reminder, what we've talked about so far is really two important paradigms. So we've looked at greedy algorithms and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that today. And we've also looked at um, data structures as kind of an algorithms paradigm in the sense that like when we're talking about minimum spanning tree algorithms, where the the efficiency of the algorithm really depends on the efficiency of your data structure uh, and, and what data structure you, you use. And that's true for a lot of um, kind of more complicated problems that we might, might want to solve. And so we're going to move on to a new problem today, which is matchings. It has uh, some practical importance and a lot of historical importance to the matching problem. And so we'll talk about what that means and some ways to solve it and some different ways of analyzing um, how we solve it. Uh, so let's have a look. Here's the definition of the problem, and we'll see some examples in a second. So a matching is a subset of edges. So whenever we're talking about a matching, we're talking about edges. Matching contains edges where they don't share any vertices. So a matching is like you want to pair people up where only certain people are getting along with each other, so only certain people can be paired up, and uh, you want to have as many pairs as possible. And a greedy algorithm approach is to just keep choosing an edge um, that goes between two vertices that aren't matched yet, and then keep doing that and doing that until uh, you can't do any more. Um, and what I want to emphasize is that when I say greedy algorithm in the context of this, in of this lecture today, what I'm not going to mention is um, the the particular greedy strategy. So normally with greedy algorithms, the greedy choice matters a lot. And we are going to look at that in class, but today we're not really thinking about any particular greedy strategy. We're thinking about like any greedy strategy, any way where you're choosing an edge and then you choose another edge. And remember what distinguishes all greedy algorithms is that once you make a choice, you don't backtrack on it. Okay, so here's uh, an example graph. Um, and a greedy matching is just going to be some way of deciding um, edges to pick. So we're going to pick, let's say, this edge. So when we pick that edge between A to B, now we say A and B are matched up. And now I can't pick an edge that touches A or B ever again. So like I couldn't pick A and H to go to the matching now because A is already chosen. But I could choose like H to L. OK, so now those are matched up. And uh, then I could choose like E to J, maybe. OK, and uh, I to M, get that one in there, and um, F to G. And if I do that, now what you'll notice is that I can't choose any more. So if I had some strategy that made me choose these five edges, so I have five edges in my matching, um, now I can't add any more edges because you'll notice that I have a couple of vertices that haven't been matched up, but there's no edges between them. Um, so once there's no edges between the unmatched vertices, that's when your greedy algorithm is going to be done. Now you can probably see that, oh, there might be a better way if we move this one over here and we did this one over here. That's right. Um, first of all, we should realize that the reason why you can see that is because this is a nice visual example. If this were an example with 100 vertices, um, probably it would be much harder to see what to do. And also, I want to emphasize that uh, that's, that's not a greedy algorithm then. Once you talk about saying, oh, well, we could shift this one over here, we could move this, then that's not a greedy strategy. That's um, some kind of other algorithm strategy. So uh, here we're talking about strategies that never backtrack. OK, so this, this is a greedy match. Um, and when we talk about greedy matches, there's a term, and, and it's not just for matching. This is a maximal match. So what does this maximal idea mean is that we can't add anything else to it. 
So a maximal solution to anything is one where you can't kind of improve it anymore. It'd be the end of any greedy strategy um, or any kind of optimization problem. You can also think of it as like a local maximum in a graph. So if we were, uh, if we had a graph and we're trying to find the maximum of something like this, um, it might be a, an intermediate peak like this one. So we can't go up any further from here to get to a higher point, but of course there might be a higher peak somewhere else. Okay, so that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, so when we say maximal, that just means that it can't be increased at all, as opposed to a maximum solution is what we're gonna see right here. This is a, the, these red edges, so here, 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 I don't know why I'm drawing them again. <laughs> um, these, these, these red edges, this is a maximum matching in this graph. So it's the same graph, but now the maximum matching has um, six edges whereas the maximal matching we just found um, through some kind of like a greedy strategy only had five edges. Okay, and how do I know that this is maximum? Well, normally it might be hard to prove that you actually have a maximum matching. In this case, you can see that it's, it's not that hard to prove because every node is part of a matching except for one. So there's an odd number of nodes. There's no way we could pair all of them up, but we can, this is as close as we could possibly get. So. Um, in this case, it's clear that there's no way to have a larger matching than this one, but there might be a maximum matching that doesn't go up to getting like all of the nodes are all but one, and then it might be harder to prove that that's actually maximum. And now what we wanna think about is how good is this? Or another way of saying it is um, how bad can this kind of greedy strategy where we just keep picking edges until there's no more edges we can choose, how bad could this be? Um, Clearly it can be smaller than the maximum, but how much smaller than the maximum could we possibly be? And in order to answer that, um, the really cool way that you can look at it is you can overlay these choices on each other. So what if we look back, if we kind of like go back and forth between these two, we can see how they interact. So on this picture with the maximum matching, I'm just gonna add in the edges that we chose in the maximal matching. So we had A, B, that's a different one. H to L, that one is the same. Um, we had I to M, F to G, and E to J. And this now kind of red-green picture, the this uh, Christmassy picture with, with red and green edges, uh, let's just remember what's going on. So the, the six uh, red edges are part of the optimum solution, the maximum matching, and the green edges are part of this uh, greedy solution. And so what we notice is that there's a couple things that can happen. So one thing is that they can kind of um, just be the same. So we have some that are just the same edges. Okay, that makes sense, then they, they equal out. We have some like this situation with A, B, and D where we get an, a path that's alternating red and green, but this path has even length. So this path has length two. So this is an even length path. And then again, the number of red and green edges there is the same. Um, we can also get this kind of a picture here. So here's a cycle, right? This cycle goes from E, I, M, and J. Um, it alternates between the two colors and it's also of even length. So we can have an even length cycle. And again, in all three of these pictures, we have the same number of red and green edges. So the same number of edges in the optimal solution as in our greedy solution. So for all three of these kind of situations here, there's no difference in the size between the two matchings. So the, but the interesting one is this last case over here. And notice what's different is that we have a path, but it has an odd length. So this is an odd length path. And this is where we really have a difference. We have one more red edge than green edge. Um, so this is why, this is a, a way of saying like, this is why there's more um, there's one more edge in the optimum solution than in our greedy solution. So now let's, what we wanna do is try to think about like, can we formalize this? So I chose this example precisely so that it would show all these different cases. It turns out that this is basically all the cases that you can get when you overlay these, these two graphs. 
Um, so what we want to prove is we want to prove something about how much better the optimum solution can be than, uh, I should say, by a greedy algorithm rather than the greedy algorithm. I should say a greedy algorithm because, again, we haven't specified exactly how that greedy choice works. Um, and so let's start to think about this. Whenever we're proving something about a greedy solution, we always consider like the optimum solution and the greedy one and then try to compare them. Um, so that's kind of what we just started to do. So I'll say let opt be a maximal, uh, maximum matching. So that's like the absolute maximum. And let M be a maximal matching like from a greedy uh, strategy, right? Again, uh, and I almost got myself tripped up, but maximum means like the, the max anywhere. Maximal means it's like a local max, means um, I can't add anything more to it, but maybe there could be something better. So if I overlay these, so remember, what is a matching is a selection of edges. What I wanna consider uh, are the edges E that are formed by a set difference between these. Um, so really by the, uh, not, not exactly the set difference, but the, the things that are in both um, that aren't in the intersection. Okay, so things that are in one of these sets and not the other. Okay, and that's exactly what we're looking at here if we take out this H to L. So this H to L is, those are both edges in both matches, so we're kind of like eliminating that one, and we're looking at the rest of the graph, the rest of these pictures. And what you should notice is that in a matching, because any um, vertex can only be part of one, can only touch one edge of the matching, the degree of every vertex when we combine them like this with the red and green, the degree is always um, zero, one, or two. And any vertex, it can only touch one green edge and one red edge at most. If it touched two green edges, then that wouldn't be a valid matching. Right, A can't be in two partnerships at once in a matching. Um, and so what we have in E is that every degree is at most two. So E contains only um, paths and cycles. If you think about that, that's the only kind of graph picture that you can make. You can't have any kind of like a three-way split or, or something else. Um, because we can only have paths and cycles, uh, be because every degree is only at most two. And so now, um, going back to what we have, uh, the, the colors must alternate. So the colors must alternate on any path or cycle. Why is that? Well, remember, so why, what does it mean for the colors to alternate here? What I'm saying is that here's an edge from C to F, and then an ed edge from F to G. I'm saying those can't both be red or both be green. Why not? Because they have to, the red edges come from a matching and the green edges come from a different matching. If we had two green edges here, then that wouldn't be a valid matching. Remember, the whole point of the matching is we're pairing people up, but you can only be in one pair. We're, we're selecting edges that don't share any vertices between them. So the colors have to alternate on any path or cycle that's formed in this way. Um, and so that tells us a couple things. First of all, um, that means right away that there's no odd length cycles, no odd length cycles, because otherwise you would have two colors, two of the same color next to each other. And uh, even length cycles are paths, cycles and paths um, are same size in each, right? So for an even length cycle or path, it really doesn't make a difference whether it's red or green because they have the same number. And so then the very last thing to say is that the biggest difference is a length three odd cycle where we have two red, like two in opt and one in M, right? So what we've said, we've kind of eliminated to what, when we consider the edges which are in one graph and not, and not another, most of them are kind of a wash when we have even length cycles or paths. So like that's, that's this picture over here and this picture in the middle. Um, they have the same number of red and green edges. The only time that we can get a difference is in an odd length path. 
and the ratio of that difference is greatest when we have length three. So here it's like a two for one, two optimum edges and one edges in our one edge in our greedy match. If you think about it, if this were length five, then it would be like three for two. So that would be a um, smaller ratio of difference. And then that's actually the whole proof that we wanted to do. Um, so this is the only time that we can get a, a difference is in odd length cycle, odd length paths. And uh, that biggest difference is two optimum and one greedy one. And so that means that the total optimum solution is at most two times the size of uh, one produced by the greedy algorithm. So just as, a, just as a review here, what do we do? The specific techniques are kind of clever here. I wouldn't expect you to come up with this proof on your own, but I do expect you to follow it. And I expect you to see what are the main ideas in this proof and be able to apply that to other problems. So the main idea is that whenever we're talking about like optimality of something, what we've started with is said, imagine that we have an optimum solution. I'm gonna compare it to the one that's been produced by like my strategy, by my greedy algorithm, and then try to transform it in some way. In, the, in previous instances, we were trying to prove that a greedy strategy, strategy always gives the optimum solution. So then we were saying, um, I, there's a way of like turning my greedy choice into that uh, something that's as good as the optimum choice. Here, we're not trying to say that the greedy algorithm is always optimal. Indeed, it's not. So we have this maximal matching here and it's not optimal. It's not as good as the, the red one on the next page. But what we're trying to prove is that they can't, it can't be too far off. And in this case, uh, what we've seen is that it can only be at most a factor of two. So that means that if you have some any greedy strategy, in fact, even the dumbest possible greedy strategy, it's only going to produce matchings which are um, like at least half as big as the optimal one, the optimal maximal matching would be. Um, so this is what's called an approximation algorithm or approximation ratio of, of two here. And uh, that's going to be an important thing for some of the problems that we're going to be looking at first starting with matching, but also some some later ones. And for some problems that are really hard to solve, having an approximate ratio of two, like being at, uh, half as good as the optimum solution is like good enough for what we're trying to do if we can then have a fast algorithm to do it. Sometimes that's not good enough and uh, we can do better, but that's a, that's a way that we think about um, when we can't necessarily get the absolute optimum one of the questions, if we can try to figure out how to get the absolute optimum one, another question we can ask is like, how bad is the one that we came up with? And in this case, it's a factor of two. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit more, um, just, to, just to round this out a little bit about the history of this problem. So computing a maximum matching, it's an old problem. It first came up and was studied in the 1960s in very early days of computing and um, it has a lot of applications. So you can think of like, I'm trying to find um, partners to, to do a group project, but some of them are in different sections or some of them don't get along together. And how can I make the most like nice partnerships as I can? Um, but also has problems in modern days. Like if I have some Uber drivers that are around in the world and I have some people that are asking for rides, how can I quickly match them up so that the the most nearby Uber driver gets to pick up that person um, and everybody like is happy and, and as many riders get um, good pickups as possible. Okay, so one of the early papers on this was by this guy, Jack Edmonds. I wanted to have a picture of him because he's a, he's, a he's a weird person. Uh, he's from my alma mater, the University of Waterloo in Canada. Uh, this way of, of dressing, I would say, is quite typical of my experience with him. He was uh, retired by the time I was a grad student there, but he still would come around from time to time. Um, so just a interesting character and, and pretty influential in our, in our area of, of, especially for theoretical computer science. Uh, I've read that he, uh, and I don't have the reference for this, but he apparently coined the term, term greedy algorithm. So we've been talking about greedy algorithm. Um, that came from him, apparently, or at least some people said. Um, and then also he came up with the optimum, with the first algorithm to actually find 
um, and optimum matching. So find a maximum matching. And the way that this algorithm works, we're not gonna go into the details of this, it's called the Blossoms algorithm. He's a very evocative person as well, so he likes to um, have papers that make nice analogies for what they're talking about. Um, the idea is you want to find one of these odd length paths, right? So if I'm starting with this green matching, I would like to find this is what's called an augmenting path. Augmenting path uh, for the greedy matching because it's a path that starts at an unmatched vertex and it, and then it has an, and it ends at an unmatched vertex and it goes every other edge is in the matching or not. And so that's what, like just going from here, that's what we want to find because then what you do is you switch out, of course, those two red edges on that um, augmenting path and now you have a bigger matching than what you had before. And the so the way that this algorithm works is that you do a um, breadth first search or a depth first search. And in that depth first search, you either find an augmenting path, which is great, then you take it, or you collapse a blossom. And I'll see what that means in a second. So you, you then recurse to a smaller graph and try to find an augmenting path there. Or if you can't find an augmenting path or a blossom, or then um, what he proved is that um, you're done. You already have the maximum matching. And a, a blossom in his case is like if we have these green and red edges, a blossom is where, if I can draw this, a blossom is where you have an, a path. So you, you can think of this depth first search, you're kind of like going down and you're alternating between um, edges which are in your matching and which are not. And a blossom is where you have some path and then at the end of that path, you have an odd length cycle like this. And so that, um, that odd length cycle at the end of the path is called a blossom. It's like a little balloon. So I think he called this part the stem and the end part is the blossom. And it's again, part of his algorithm is that he proves that you can collapse that. Remember we talked about no edge contraction before in minimum spanning trees. So you can contract that to a single node and then recurse on that. Um, so it's a sophisticated, complicated algorithm. Um, we're not going into the details of it. You're not expected to understand the details of it. Um, and the important thing is that the running time is like big theta of n to the fourth. So it's a pretty high running time, but it's polynomial in terms of n. Um, so he's the first to show this algorithm where you could solve this problem of finding a maximum matching not using a greedy strategy, but using this much more complicated um, blossom, collapse, and recurse strategy. And where what happens is basically you have to run the depth first search n squared times. And so you get this total running time in the worst case. Um, so it has some historical importance. Um, and I'll, I'll mention some more of that historical importance to this particular paper next time. Um, but that's Jack Edmonds. That's uh, why people started to care about this problem. And uh, I hope that this was interesting. So we talked about approximation ratios. We talked about the greedy strategy, the difference between maximal and maximum in an optimization problem. And then this, uh, this blossom algorithm that has a high running time, but still a polynomial running time from 1965. Okay, see you next time.